one of the good things I think this film did was it was very courageous and attacking. You don't normally expect horror films to be the ones to attack certain psychological things that are going on, like Candyman and uh, and, and also like uh, us. Mm -hmm. But they're more so starting to do that now because like you just said, reality can be some of the scariest things out there. All right. The hypocrisy of mommy and daddy. Mommy and was, daddy. Uh, it, it's it, one of the first scenes that they're in. Um, it was funny to me, not really funny, but amusing how, how easily they can justify Robin Blind, the tenants that they have through shady slumlord practices, like actively trying to uh, throw people out on the streets and make them homeless. One last family in the Lenox Avenue building, then it's clear to tear down. And that kind of stealing is acceptable to them. That's not going to send them straight to hell. But when he comes in and tells mommy, some niggas robbed the store. They they came out they came out quick with that. Oh, I think quick. that was the only time it was used. But they they let you know right off the bat. Like we're we're gonna get it in there once, so you know what kind of people these are. And then they're like, may they burn in hell. So uh, knocking off a liquor store in order to survive because of the practices that they're that they're imposing on the community, uh, that is. Uh, that's that's worthy of going to hell but what they're doing is completely fine in their eyes in fairness that's though but that's oh that's that old school racism i talk about because the fact that you you find out later they're 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 kind of more so prejudiced than racist because they're opportunists because when they the one daughter that they had like they told that bitch to burn in hell to like they wanted everyone to burn in hell it was just like no whether you're white black jew blue didn't matter homer simpson couldn't have been there you yellow bastard you're gonna burn in springville hell yeah <laughs> this is this is a very stereotypical movie of the 90s but one of the first things that i really loved about this is that the movie starts off with a black person reading versus a black person dying. That usually in a horror film, we're going in 30 fucking seconds. Mm -hmm. And then, but it starts out with black people reading versus dying. So I thought that was brilliant. Yeah. Speaking of the old school racism, um, when they, when mommy and daddy are outside talking to the cops uh, and they find that like Boy Scout thing from a uh, fool, like cluing them in the fact that he's in the house still. And there's like, he, like they didn't realize there was three people in the house. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Upon realizing that, they tapped into that old racist fear about a black guy corrupting a white woman. He's in there right now with our little angel. Oh my God. <laughs> the movie was really good in the uh, in the foundation of it and like establishing the characters and establishing the time and place as far as like tapping into that like social commentary on those subjects. It, it was effective in establishing these ideas but we'll get into how they dropped the ball in the final act. We'll get there, but again, that's why I say this is 90. This really brought me back into the 90s because a lot of films in the 90s, there there was no explanation. You were either just labeled as racist, labeled as this, labeled as that. So it took me back into that genre. So now one of the things that I found very funny and it was just like, man, stick with one fucking stereotype because they got fucking Leroy here. And the, if you can't tell, you're dressed as Brandon's character, cool. says a fool, and I am dressed as Leroy, which is why you see me in this dodge. Now, if I look ridiculous, and I know Black Panther and shit, I look cool, you know, I, I like that, baby. I like that. I'm gonna take Tony, baby. But with that being said, what the fuck was going on? Because pick a stereotype, all right? You got this big, angry, burly black man in this dashiki with the dashiki hat. And if that is his character, okay. But, then, but, but he's trying to send these kids on a mission and he's smoking heaters. He is fucking smoking. Like, wait a minute, no, one of these things are not like the other. Yeah. One something that's wrong. You can't put him in a dashiki because he he's supposed to be like, oh no, what's porking that? Oh no, I want none of that. You know what uh -huh. I'm saying? And then he's smoking cigarettes. What the fuck is going on? Yeah. I tell you, man, back in my day, he's like, get the fuck out of here. Either he's a culture vulture or the pro or the uh Prop wardrobe Prop department where it's just like, what's a strong black man look like? They didn't have Google or Siri then, so they just had the... And not only that, they made a cast of them, and just in case they needed a strong black man again, remember they said the body cast? What the fuck was that? Somebody well, got their rocks off. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have to be naked. <laughs> I still, oh, don't, don't you do that. I, no, I, no, I, William asked you the same question, and I'm going to kill someone this Friday. No, I and I had a reason, <laughs> and when you see the movie, it's evident. I, ne I never, I didn't see a Bing Rhames dick once in People Under the Stairs, so again, why did they have to get I, a full life I'm just cast? glad... You're looking for dick now. I was seeing dick and now you're looking for it. That is beautiful. Damn it. Last time, I keep seeing dick. I'm not sure if this moment was intended to be comical, <laughs> but I laughed my ass off. 
when Full uh, and Leroy get shocked when they grab the doorknob. <laughs> it, uh, it even electrocuted the fucking dog. <laughs> yeah, that, that was funny. Oh, I said that. Where is it at? You say, I don't know how they got this or what they did to that dog, but it was one of the best, funniest shots of the movie when it cuts to... Uh, when it cuts to Leroy getting up and you see the dog convulsing just like they were on the floor. But that, I would say that was the only time that Brandon, uh, as full, was like over the top with his acting. Read it. Electric dog city. <laughs> Electricity plus dog. Bing rams. <laughs> Little black boy. <laughs> what did you want from me? Because that shit freaked me out. I'm like, wait a minute. That was like that was like, that was that's this is something out of uh, out of a comedy, <laughs> man. No, I'm gonna tell you what was out of a comedy. Clearly, this movie was inspired. Which, which one came out? Clue or this first? Clue came out, right? I would say so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, how many fucking passages were in this house? It made Clue look like it had one room. It reminded me, especially when they went into the walls and were running through there. Mm -hmm. There's a scene in uh, I can't remember if it's Evil Dead or Evil Dead Two. Um, and there's a lot of comparisons to Sam Raimi and Evil Dead and Bruce Campbell and People Under the Stairs. I feel like they took a lot of inspiration from that, but I'll get into that in, uh, later on. Okay. But um, when they're running through those walls, that was very reminiscent of, uh, of a scene in e uh, one, one of the Evil Dead movies that was, um, it was like pretty much the same thing, shot for shot. There's a scene in the movie where the white dude, uh, uh, it was Eldon or man or- Daddy. Da Daddy. Daddy gets punched in the nuts. And he, somebody called Guinness Book of World Records. That is the fastest male nut punch recovery I've ever seen in my motherfucking life. Yeah, uh, he's probably castrated or some weird I can shit. see that. Yeah. I can see that. I can see that like powder or something. I can see that. But I will say this. Was that fucking Cujo or Lassie? What the fuck? That dog. Listen, that dog. I want you to know right now. He's getting an honorable mention from me. That was a real fucking dog. Uh -huh. Dude. That dog, and he had to be the smart. Every team was always in the right place. They're like, go get him. Kill him. Kill him, Fitz. Kill him. Go get him. Go get him. I'm like, look at this smart motherfucker right here. And there is something. Um, they, they fucking that dog. <laughs> I I, I want to know how they, they got that that performance out of the dog to have it oh, uh, oh, on the ground. This was the year, I think this is the year Peter was formed. Cause yeah. when they find out what the dude, like, I mean, even pushing the fucking dog's head, I'm like, that's a real fucking dog. <laughs> like the dog, I felt like somebody was holding the dog's hind legs, trying to get out, the dog's trying to get out. And they got the little, poor Brandon, poor fool, is kicking the fucking, I'm like, yo, I, I'm, shit, that's why the suit showed up. <laughs> Talking about the fuck out of here. <laughs> Going back to that moment where they're talking about their, uh, their little, angel being um being corrupted by the black boy that that is yeah. still inside so right after they realize that they run inside now mind you the cops just left like within five seconds a ago, ago. he's in the house just Bam. like they have to be Bam. within earshot to hear that they have to be able to hear that and on that note how are the how is there anything left of the walls in the house because it seems like he just makes a habit of recklessly just firing the gun off through the house When she said some bullshit 90s cliche shit like never shoot your gun outside bitch the whole neighborhood just yeah, told me that all not like what the fuck are you talking about unless they like unless they took like a lot of uh precautions and really soundproof i mean they've got like all the locking mechanisms and crazy shit like that so it's not unheard of i guess i, I guess this is serendipitous to say i got a little jordan peele feel because it doesn't it doesn't count because he wasn't making horror films back then but did you notice the fucking singing and the dance along every time a nigga got killed they couldn't stop dancing. Even when he thought he killed um, oh, he was like, oh, I just got me. Oh, I, oh, he went the buck dancing in that motherfucker. And then when the, when the, when Vin, um, when um, Vin Ray, uh, Leroy got, they were they were fucking on and on and on and on with the imagination and the racist back. Let's see what we can kill today. Yeah. Like, yeah. So the, so yeah, they were a little bit again old school racism. Yeah. They didn't, you know. I mean, uh, you know, four four ones. Shame on them. Full, full twice, shame on full. <laughs> full gets tricked by those stairs when they go into the house. And that's fine, that, that's the first time. He, he, he did not know, that's not on him. But then, at the end of the movie, he's standing on those very same stairs. 
that this happened to him on holding a gun uh, or holding a gimp daddy at gunpoint. And then here he goes again. It's like, how'd you not see that coming, man? Perfect segue for that. Did you not get a feeling that if this was not a horror and this was a comedy, you cannot tell me someone didn't see this, especially being uh, not John Landis. I was we're looking about John Landis earlier, but Home Alone. Huh? <laughs> That's oh, Home yeah. Alone. It's yeah. like the, the kids, <laughs> the like shot, the dropping digger. a brick oh. down the... Yeah, and I'm looking at this shit like the electric <laughs> shit. Like, and I'm looking like, wait a minute. Somebody yeah. saw this replaced him with a white kid and made it a Christmas story instead of Halloween and made it a comedy. That's true. Yeah, that is, that's yeah. my fucking theory. This movie got ripped. It and got, now, It got living singled. That, oh, now, thank you for being a friend's <laughs> Ross. But yeah, dude, we need to, hey, we, that's a TTFT exclusive. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that that's what happened, but you can see so many similarities going from room to room. The little sidekick, the cops show up, they leave, they don't know what's going on. They even have, um, they even have like the, the really scary dude that you expect to be the bad guy that turns out to be your ally. Right. right. Like, you know, the, in Home Alone, it was the dude, old man, neighbor next door, always shoveling the snow and they were freaked out by him. He was Home Alone Stairmaster. That's fucking crazy. And yet again, mommy and daddy are nowhere to be found. All that money in the basement is very interesting to me. I thought it I thought it said something interesting to see all that uh all that money just kind of hoarded in the basement. Mommy and daddy are so fucked up. They have no use for the money they're hoarding, obviously, because it's just sitting down there like antiques. It's like their only motivation for getting rich is purely to ensure that other people stay poor. Like they're not trying to, they're not trying to enrich themselves. They're trying to spread poverty around them, which is uh, like, it was just so alarming when at the end of it, you see, like I, I could have, I could have more easily accepted that they were ripping off the community to enhance their own lives in one way or another, but to see that they were doing it and doing nothing with the money that they were, uh, that they were procuring through their various shady pursuits. It's just all down in piles laying in the basement. I believe we call that greed. Hey, oh yeah, yeah. It, it, that is, it's like the perfect analogy or metaphor for the super 1% rich. Like they, money means nothing to them. Yeah, again, you call it Squid Games. Squid yeah. Games. <laughs> Called it, brother. My last note is not, uh, I don't even have any thoughts on this. I just wanted uh, uh, you as a strong black man. <laughs> I, I do identify as one thing. Especially right now. What do you mean by that? I just feel like you're about know, to know, know what does that mean? do a sermon at any moment. Oh, no, 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 no. When fool calls daddy boy. Kiss your ass goodbye, boy. For the uneducated out there, please educate them on the, the, the significance of that single word. Well, the term boy is a term from many many moons ago of racism and just every essentially when we were stolen or our my ancestors were stolen from africa uh our names were ripped from us and we were given other names but before we were given names because only the names were given to the ones we, we had slave masters not stair masters slave masters uh but the ones who didn't have that they were just like, hey boy they didn't want to know your name you were i mean and, and they even went worse than that because before the constitution before, before became became three-fourths of a man we were still the boy and so that's where some of the writing tries to come back and play play back yet again 90s cliche of they're letting the young black kid call the older white man boy because he's, he's letting them know like hey i know what you i mean you called us niggas earlier so essentially that's where the term boy comes from and again it's not something even to this day you still hear it even if you get pulled over by a cop sometimes you're where, where your boy is going you hear it it's like they're trying i mean again they it's a, one of the most dehumanizing things you can say to a person like you know i have a name and furthermore bitch my, my 99 times out of 100 my name is that of your form of a former slave master and you still won't call me a name i'm still just boy what so yeah that's where the term comes from but yeah that was just crazy but i will say this though one of the good thing i think this film duh, did was it was very courageous and attacking you don't normally expect horror films to be the ones to attack certain psychological things that are going on like Candyman and uh, and, and also like uh, us mm -hmm. but they're more so starting to do that now because like you just said reality can be some of the scariest things out there it's one of the scariest things out there you said when we did our Candyman episode yeah I mean that's why I said at the top of the episode that this is for the time that it came out and for who made it it was definitely innovative to a degree Wes Craven is coming from movies like Last House on the Left 
Hills Have Eyes, Nightmare on Elm Street, that are pretty much making him a household name, probably primarily within suburban white communities. Mm -hmm. So to build that reputation for yourself and then take the chance to do something that uh, if it was done at all, it wasn't, it definitely wasn't like commonplace to make a horror film, like you said, where uh, the, the stereotype with horror films is that the black, the black character dies. Wes Craven took this movie and it was, uh, the protagonist is a, a strong black character. It revolves around the struggles of black culture around the time the uh, white people are the, uh, the villains of the film and they are, like grotesque and villains. And really venom, venomous, if you will. Yeah, so I think there's uh, there's respect to be paid to Wes Craven for taking that chance and doing something like that when he did. And he didn't have to either. Yeah, shout I mean, out and to then the, he turned around and did Vampire in Brooklyn. Yeah, and shout out to the worst, uh, I guess, step granddad ever. Like, you told the kid how bad the place was, you let him go right back fucking over. We're gonna get these gold coins in the morning. We getting paid, bitch. Normally I tell you to give these things back, but. <laughs> you know <laughs> and guys those are our talking points please let us know what did we miss put it down in the comments and if you're in the live chat hey here's looking at you kid mm -hmm.